Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today in the chapel we have Hebrews 10, 39. We are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who believe and are saved. So, no, just keeping my faith. <laughs> that sounds silly, but it is. So, welcome to the sewing section. Um, I got some sewing done. Um, not a whole lot. Uh, unfortunately, I had to stop. And if you watch the crochet section, you know that I had to spend a little bit of time making a purse shawl. I normally have them in backup, and I just haven't been making them as much because I've been making other things for me to wear at work. So um, I have some that I need to get done. And one was needed before I had it done, so I took the time and made it. Uh, the stockings are coming along. I have them both, them all, both the inside and the outside. Um, I don't know if I'm going to stitch around like this and then put the trim on, or if I'm going to, because they have the little uh, things here. They have the uh, silver topper, I don't know, boot cup, I guess it would be called. And I don't know if I'm going to do that or if I'm going to put them both right side in and then sew it in like so. You know, just put it over the top and then sew here and then fold it down. I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to attach those yet. I've never made stockings, so it is what it is. Um, the green ones, I went ahead and did this one like this, and I thought about using this one as a liner, but in order to do that, I'm going to have to take out the second, the French seam that I put in. I'm being lazy. I don't know if I want to either take out the French seam or just make two. I'm thinking I might take out the French seam because they're awfully flimsy with just one um, piece of material. So, or they feel flimsy to me. So, I have all four of them ready to go. The liner is complete. They're stuck inside. Just stop because I haven't figured out how I'm going to put that cup on yet. Um, the pink, the purple, the red, and of course the blue. Uh, so, I don't know. I'll figure it out probably this next weekend. Um, I really want to get these done because once I get these done, the only thing that I have to do is fill those and my Christmas for my kids is essentially done. And I'm happy with that. It's not even the end of January and I'm ready for Christmas next year. And I got everything on sale and spent half of what I spent just last month in December for Christmas. Mm -hmm. that. I have a little bit of nasal drainage this morning. It snowed last night. It didn't stick. Well, at about 2 o'clock when we got up to Stoke Fire, there was snow on the ground. By 3.30, um, I had to go to the little girl's room. I got up and checked the fire. You know, I mean, you can't just go to the little girl's room. But anyway... Uh, when I looked outside to see if there was more snow, it had all melted away. So, yeah, it is what it is. No snow. So, I got those pretty much done. Um, and then I had to have a gift bag for that purshaw. And I thought, I'll just pick out material that is perfect for her and I'll make that one bag. Um, I have these, <laughs> uh, you know how this goes. I don't ever just do one. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more ready to go, but they don't have the handles on them. I don't have any of the handles. Uh, those I have sewed. I stopped and I was like, I'm not going to finish these. Um. Uh, but I have several, and the handles are not even sewn on those. So 
I did one set of handles, sewed them, didn't even press them, and thought, I need to stop and get some other things done. So, yeah. I really have decided to get these done, and, and I really have put my heart and soul into getting them all fixed up. So, I'm working on it. Like I said, that'll put me February. Um, I don't want to just sit down. I get bored with them if I sit down and do like all of them. So, uh, do until it's not fun anymore. How's that for you? Okay. So I did those and those. And the other thing that I wanted to work on was the skirt. Um, have you ever had something in your head and you have trouble getting it out? Yeah, that's where I'm at with this. So I'm going to move this over to here. Let me see. If that's... I've tried a different spot today so that it's easier and you guys aren't so um, moved around so much. But it's hard to get this in the shot and my face because, yeah, I'm not that short. So anyway. All right, I'm going to just roll my chair over here and see if this will work. It worked when I tried it, but. All right, so I have the elastic band on. I have the whole thing seamed. The only thing that I have to do is this isn't laying exactly the way I want it. So I'm thinking I'm just going to roll it again and make it a little bit more invisible. And instead of using cotton thread, I'm going to use the invisible thread. It has a little more stretch, and I think this is a little bit more stretchy than I thought. So once I do that, I also just hemmed the whole thing, and I didn't, like, measure it. So you can see here, I just hemmed this side and then hemmed that side. But now I've just got to figure out the shape of the bottom. This is the shape it's going to be. I just need to hem this. And then this, no, let me see here. If I can turn her. Um, and I did have to put a pleat in because I screwed up the measurement of my elastic. Actually, I didn't take into common, uh, into account the stretchy when you sew it. You know, you pull it a little bit so that it'll do this wavy. Anyway, got my elastic a little too long. So, um, I just went ahead and put a little proof in the back. And that's what makes me think I'm going to leave it longer in the back. Um, when I have my shirt on and my belt on, you're not even going to be able to see that. It's just going to be, because the shirt comes down to here. So this is all that you'll see. You won't even see that dart. Uh, but, and I don't like darting on elastic, but hey, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So anyway, I'm thinking I'm just going to even this up and leave it as I roll this back. Um. I saw a really cute skirt that had it like wavy in the back. I don't want to. <laughs> I think I want to leave it. At first I, I thought, oh, that's a cute idea. And then I went, hmm, maybe not. So I have this in my head. I'm just having trouble getting it out onto her. And in crochet, I... I have been crocheting clothes longer than, oh, I got to sneeze. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. Whew. Uh, I've been crocheting longer and can get things out of my head into what I want it to be a lot easier than I can with sewing. So this is kind of a work in progress. Next week, I'll show you the two shirts that I have that... I plan on wearing with this, and I think it's going to look cute. Just have to figure out, and I don't want it the same length as the inner skirt. I, I, I know that, but I don't know. I think I just want it to come down about maybe that long. I don't know. So I'm going to measure it and even it all up and pin it and seam it and get it done. So we'll see how it goes. But that is the last thing that I have to do on the dress. And then it's done. Uh, after that, I've got some ideas for 
Um, couple of shirts. I really am better at spring clothes up here than I am winter clothes because in my mind, winter clothes are all crochet. So I'm working on it, getting better at the sewing thing, getting better at making clothes in general. So, um, yeah, and I definitely like the price tag. So I have this that I gave I think $17. I got some other things on that ticket. But I think it was like $17 or something, or it was less than 20 bucks. And I'm going to get this skirt and have enough of this to um, make, I think I have enough to put sleeves on one of the uh, shirts that I made. And I think it'll look better. So I might adapt one of the shirts to having that. And I haven't put very much into um, the material and stuff. I know you guys saw these and I may, I'm making, you know, goal was to make five of these. I may end up making six. I think I'm going to rip it out and just do it right. You know how it is. <laughs> Looking for a shortcut, but I think I really need to do it right. So, um, yeah. And after that, you know, after the skirt, I have plans for a top and the top is really super simple. So yeah, <laughs> it is what it is, but it'll be simple. Um, and it's just puffy like sleeves made out of that stuff put onto a shirt that I've already completed and then elastic. But anyway, getting better at it definitely getting better at my size. The shirts, of course, I had to redo because of the chest size. And, um, this one is just the hem playing with me, but I think it, I think it'll be fine. So, all right. That's really all I have in the sewing because I did stop and do some crochet, but the goal is to make these shorter. Um, the last thing that I want to do is I know some people watch the uh, crochet and some watch the um, sewing. So if you are one of those that watches the crochet and the sewing, you already know this. I apologize, but for those of you who don't know, this last weekend, RJ placed second at the AFR or ACRA finals. So um, it was an entire God thing. Uh, I know you heard in the clip of for the drawing that he had retired Coop. Um, he had the up and coming horse he showed you. So, and he said he was getting ready for the ACRA final. So he was practicing on the young horse that was getting the young horse going. He actually had a horse that was supposed to mount him at the finals. The problem is, is that Wednesday, so the finals were Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Wednesday, the finals, I mean, Wednesday morning, he got a call. It was 11 or so uh, that the horse that was supposed to mount him, and he, he pays for that service. Um, so he didn't have to pay for the service because it didn't happen. Um, but the horse that he was supposed to be mounted on for the ACRE finals um, cut its leg. So I had stitches and can't perform. RJ said, oh no. So he starts calling around to see if he could be mounted. Well, other people were mounted. There were some horses that already had three runs, but they didn't think they could take six. There was, he got a couple people, you know, that, oh, hey, I heard you're looking for, you can ride mine. And he told me, he says, I don't, I won't have a, I won't stand a chance on those horses. Those horses can't do, um, finals. They, they're just not. And he was right. The two horses that were, he was offered didn't place hardly at all in the finals. Um, and just young horses or horses that aren't used to the loud and the thunder of finals. Finals is a big light show. Um, the way I put it to people is if you've ever heard that big, that let's get ready to rumble kind of thing, that is the introduction to 
um, the rodeo. There's fireworks and flares going off and uh, music playing and, you know, it, it's very loud. And then being inside, it's a very booming, uh, echoing building. Okay, so it's a tin building with all this noise and light show going on and there's yeah, it's a big thing. And so anyway, uh, his horse he knew wasn't ready. The other two that he was offered he knew wasn't really ready and couldn't do what he needed to do. So he, after three months standing in the pasture, Coop was brought out of retirement. <laughs> so she, uh, yeah, he checked her legs. He doctored her legs to make sure there was no swelling. And, you know, we brought, bought those expensive boots for her. So he did that um, Wednesday night to make sure that everything was healthy and good. And um, so Thursday, I had, I preached to him. He used to be the kid that bowed his head. And if you've ever listened to any of our other podcasts, you've heard stories about this. He would bow his head. Before he entered the gate and after his run was done, he bowed his head and thanked God, you know, for the, the chance. No matter what happened in that arena, he thanked him. Well, RJ has gotten away from it. And, and I guess at 26, you kind of feel invincible. So, yeah, he's kind of gotten away from it. And he just, eh, well, whatever, I got to do this. And, and he knows the Lord. I started preaching to him the first part of this year and told him, I said, you need to stop looking for fault in those runs. Look for God in those runs. And so he was doing that. And I told him, I said, you know, God is setting you up for a miracle this weekend. I said, I don't know. I said, it's just one of those little everyday miracles. I said, but you better have your eyes wide open and you better be looking for it. And he's like, oh, mom. So I preached to him, preached to him. And he's like, okay. And every night before he ran, I would send him some kind of text telling him, um, let me see if I can find it here. Uh, something about, you know, get ready for your miracle or, um, don't forget to thank God. I'm going to look them up here because I did, I was preaching. And at one point he said, oh, you know, and I said, that should have been an amen brother. And he was like, Oh my God. So, um, every night I text him and, uh, one, one point I put, I declare you are in for a miracle by the grace of God. Amen. And he put, amen. Uh, let's see here. Um, I'm looking, we had some other talks in between. I was preaching a lot. Here's the one that said, I'm telling you, God's got a miracle in the making for you. Amen. And he says, okie dokie. I said, that should have read amen. He says, amen. <laughs> so, um, praying and believing God's going to make you a miracle. And he answered, amen. So every night I sent him something and just reminding him of God. So the first night, I didn't hear anything and I got really in a, he was like, it was, the rodeo should have been over. He was on his way home. And I was like, so I called him. I was like, so how did you do? He goes, man, mom, or Archer and Coop had been in the pasture for three months, not been ridden, not been anything. He said, I warmed up really good. He said, I was only one out of the money. I said, amen. <laughs> he goes, okay, okay. So the next night, um, he goes in there and of course I had seen him the, the little, I, I believe in a miracle and, uh, he didn't call me that night, but that night was Friday night and that's when the big ACRA finals, they do a little banquet, they do formal wear, they do, um, photos, they, uh, it, it's sponsored by the Hard Rock ca uh, Casino and so they all are at the casino in this big banquet room doing this stuff. And then they have music playing. And anyway, so I didn't expect to hear from him that day, but Saturday morning 
I texted him and I was like, so how'd you do? <laughs> and, um, he was funny cause he didn't get up until like one and I texted him a lot earlier than that, but I forgot he'd been out late that night. So, uh, when he finally did answer me, he was like, mom, just one out of the money. And he says, I doesn't, you know, just one out of the money, one out of the money. And I said, well, you know what? You're in it for the average. And he goes, yep. He says, tonight I have a chance to actually place an average in the finals, you know? And he says, and of course I sent him a little thing and I said, okay, you got this a little prayer, you know? Um, and, uh, he didn't even wait Saturday night for me to text him when the rodeo was over. After the camp roping was over, there was events after that. I get a, a text. I won second in the average. So he was one out of the money again Saturday night or go round money. Okay. So they pay each round, but then those that can take three head, there's a lot less people and a lot less competition in that. And he took second in the round only to be beat by a very seasoned roper. So he was excited to say the least. And I was like, you better give praise where praise is due. And I said, there's your little miracle. I said, you thought that you weren't going to get anything because all you went into it expecting to win was maybe a little go round money. I said, but now you've won the average. I said, you took second at the ACRA finals. He said, I know, isn't it cool? <laughs> and I said, well, thank who you need to thank. And he did. He He's getting it, but it was just too funny. His little miracle. And uh, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> but he did. I did talk to him and he said, you know, her feet are doing much better just having three months off. He's figured out through his own physical therapy that sometimes wounds just take a little bit longer to heal. Um, he took her to a third vet or fourth vet. I can't remember which one it was. Anyway, I don't know how many times we have had her to the vet over these, the swollen back leg. And that lady said, the injury is in her back leg. It's in her front leg and she is overcompensating and not using the front. So therefore the back is strained. So we went to doctoring the front leg a little differently and it has healed up. We say healed up. It's been three months. She has stayed off of it. Well, as much as a horse can. Um, she hasn't been performing or straining it. Let's put it that way. And she's doing good. And so RJ has decided that he might take her to a, some of the bigger rodeos that are local. He's not going to haul her um, long places away and all that stuff. Her travel days are pretty much over, but her rodeo days are not. So, and he does plan to breed her and see if he can't get a colt down. Um, yes. Anyway, that's RJ's little miracle and RJ's little update. <laughs> so all that was going on. I was trying to get a prayer shawl done for a friend of mine. It, it's not really a friend, but I could, I call her a friend, but we're not like tight friends. Um, she is the wife of a gentleman at work and she, uh, the gentleman lost his brother-in-law and then Patty lost her, um, best friend all within like four days. And so they were attending funeral after funeral. And anyway, um, he got back Tuesday from the last funeral and I had left the prayer shawl for Patty on the desk and, uh, we will see. I, I just wanted to make her know, make it known that, you know, she's loved. So she's a sweet lady too. At Christmas, she made everybody like these little reindeer ornaments out of, of blocks and she painted it. It was really cute. Anyway, so uh, that's really all that's been going on. The snow, the weather, I made a pot of chili, um, RJ's rodeo, and of course, a little bit of sewing that I got done. I never feel like I get as much sewing done as I do knitting or crochet. Um, I don't know why. Maybe it's because the crochet is in the evening when I'm doing it. And then the sewing I just do on the weekends. I, I really don't crochet or I really don't sew during the week. I only do it on the weekends. So I guess it's all part of having a 
day job. All right, guys, I'm off of here. I will see you next week. Don't forget to go. And I haven't figured out how to put the little card thing in there. Go enter for the drawing. It There is something for the crocheter. There's a little bit for the, the sewing because I'm new to putting the sewing thing in there. So um, it's a cute little gift bag full of goodies. So, all right. I will see y'all next time. And thanks for watching.